If every tale of courage and strength from the African savannah crowns the Lion King of the Beast, his rival, the Hyena of the East, is left with a less than stellar image. Always the scavenger and villain, never the hero. Kevin Richardson is working hard to change that misconception. I think a lot of people know about the lion, but not enough is known about the hyena. The baby hyenas Kevin raises this year are destined to become ambassadors for their species. Oh, it's a cute little hyena. So that's the little hyena who's trying to dominate you. <laughs> Together, their mission is to show the world that hyenas are intelligent, strong, and fearless predators to be respected, not maligned. <laughs> My line goes like, hey, stop doing that. Hyenas can be an emotional roller coaster ride. Situated near Johannesburg, the Lion Park is home to over 100 lions who are definitely the star attraction for the thousands of tourists who visit each year. But the lion's closest rival is also represented at the park, which shares little of the limelight. These 20 spotted hyenas form one of the few captive clans in the world. Their unusual looks and skulking gait disguise a fierce and courageous hunter within. Although not in danger, hyenas face persecution in the wild and are often trapped or poisoned as human and hyena territories increasingly overlap. Kevin's mission is for the world to fall in love the way he has. So I got onto hyenas. Uh, the impression I had of them, of them was what I seen from on documentaries and television programs. It was pretty much that they pinky smelly devilish. What's brought about that change in me, I think, is obviously well, they're actually very friendly, apparently. The privilege of being able to work around these animals on a daily basis <laughs> and realize that these animals are actually highly intelligent. And very sweet, Over apparently. The past six years, many of these special hyenas have been hand raised by Kevin. He has the privilege of getting this close to the animal with the most impressive jaw strength in the animal kingdom. Oh, look, oh that's pretty dangerous. Kevin's bond is so strong, he's almost an honorary member of the clan. And anytime soon, they're expecting some new arrivals. Gina, Kevin's favorite, is due to give birth for the very How does he know which one is her? They all look alike. For any young female, who first time birth is always risky, so Kevin is keeping a very close eye. She's just giving me a good sniff and a lick, and this is basically just mutual behavior, us greeting each other, saying, hello, how are you? When are you going to have your cups? The most amazing thing is she has the ability to literally rip my face to shreds if she wanted to. But as you can see, she's quite calm and relaxed. Eh? She's almost at the end of her four month long pregnancy. Soon, Gina will give birth to a single cub or twins that Kevin hopes to raise. Come, Gina. Come on, Listen. Okay, what's happening here? Eh? I think I can hear your cubs kicking me. Yeah, come here, come into my leg here. Yeah. Oh, that's my love. Now she's giving me love. Hey, now you're giving me love. But there are no guarantees that Gina will deliver her cubs safely. Female hyenas endure exceptionally difficult births because they have unusually narrow birth canals. So we're expecting difficulties with Gina, but we're just going to pan it out and see how it goes. And Gina has another problem. The clan is ruled by a dominant female named Uno. Top-ranking Uno has already had her cubs this season. So I think the risk involved here is how is she going to react to the second in command having cubs? I don't think she's going to handle it well. At the moment, Uno's priority is mothering her new cub, Marge. 
Oh, her pub is so cute. A lower ranking female and her baby in the same enclosure. For now, Gina is safe. But Kevin will have to watch this volatile situation closely over the coming days. Kevin's latest ambassador in trouble is three month old Homer. Oh, he's so cute. Today, animal handler Helga van der Merda is doing her best to keep. Oh, he's so cute. I, I just want to hold him so bad. Life for this little guy is all about fun. It's the first hyena that affects all my stuff. He's just a little character that runs around causing nonsense with everybody, but he gets away with it. He's so cute. Things haven't always been this easy for little Homer. He was separated from his mom, Una, and sister, Marge, when he was just a few days old. Hyena cubs are born into a matriarchal society. So that one's society. Homer, that one's Marge. Males. With unusually high levels of testosterone, the one on the right is Homer. And more aggressive, and they exert their dominance from the moment they're born. The male and the female born with hyenas, typically the male will uh, always submit to the female, even at that very young age. Baby hyenas are born with a full set of teeth, and they know how to use them. By repeatedly biting, harassing her brother, Homer's sister Marge made it impossible for him to feed. Remaining with the family would have meant certain death. Thanks to Kevin's intervention, Homer has the chance of leading a new life. A life as an ambassador for his species. He'll be returned to his clan when he's one year of age. And so 12 months old. For himself. So when he's 12 months old. Two weeks later, and Kevin is worried. Expected mom Gina is still not given birth. Uh oh, did something happen? It's quite strange because it goes through phases of her looking pregnant and then other phases where she looks a little bit leaner and today definitely seemed to be a little bit leaner. When I first saw this uh, episode, I thought she had a miscarriage. But as we'll find out, that is not the case. They just haven't arrived yet. Or she's just not ready yet. Like a blooming expectant father. Waiting, but you won't tell me. Gina is now 12 days overdue. Okay. Kevin will give her just one more day before calling in the vet. Last couple of days, she's just been I love how he says he'll give her one more day and then uh, gives her a lot and gives her a few days. All over the place. Una, have you been causing trouble? Huh? The worry is that this. Gina's vision by the den indicates she may have given birth. But Kevin's worst fears are about to be realized. Hey, what are you about to say? Gina has had her cut. <laughs> this male's ruby is a woman. Uno has killed Gina's cut. Oh, she killed it. Oh, no, she killed it. His whooping beckons the rest of the clan. It's not me. That's probably the father right there. Gina's maternal instinct to protect her dead cub is still strong. I don't think she I think she's trying to lick it back to life, like she's trying to resuscitate it. What happened? Tensions are running high. Oh, she growled at him. is a clear warning to keep away. Mm. You see how volatile the situation is. I mean, that's, I think she thinks I've got something to do with what's actually going on here. And I hope I haven't uh, spoiled my relationship with her. The loss of this cub 
is a double blow for Kevin. This little hyena was special because it's Gina. She's got a, a striking personality. And I was just looking forward to really spending time with her and her little one. This is the harsh reality of life in the hyena clan. Yep, sometimes the baby doesn't make it. After the death of Gina's cub, Kevin throws himself into the hand raising of three and a half month old Homer. He's so cute. He's such a cute little hyena. Homer is a great little guy. He's, you know, everything I could want in a little hyena. There's no doubt the rambunctious little hyena has stolen Kevin's heart. Little hyenas have great personality, but this guy just goes like one step further. And I can see we're going to have a lifelong relationship. Not going to just end there. Meanwhile, Homer's sister Marge is living a very different life among the adult hyenas. She's starting to leave her birth den for short periods and is learning her place within the clan. In contrast, Homer is growing up alone away from other hyenas. So early contact with other animals is essential if Homer is ever to return to the clan. He's about to meet some unconventional and unlikely playmates. Yeah. We don't have a, a litter of, of hyena cubs running around, so the next best thing is a lion cub. Even though the lion cubs are much bigger, Homer How old are the lion cubs? They look at least six months old. And they get along like a house on fire. Really amazing stuff. They compete for, for milk and for food. I mean, they're still on yeah, bottles, so they, they're probably about eight months old, maybe. Uh, Homer fits, fits right in. in the wild, cubs of these two competing predators would never have the chance to interact. Yeah. Because they would kill each other. This mixed yeah. species playground is all about play fighting and dominating each other. Homer will need to master these vital skills before his return to his birth clan. Since the death of Gina's cub, life in the clan has finally calmed down again. Distraught at her loss, Gina had reacted badly to Kevin's intervention. This is old Gina who wanted to murder me a couple of weeks ago. Her aggression towards Kevin had been out of character. Well, it had been understandable, though. She just lost her ba her only baby. Kevin's now uncertain about their relationship. But although she seems wary, she's displaying no signs of aggression. Only interest in seeing her long-lost clanmate. Basically, it's a what have I done moment. She's basically saying, I'm sorry. Being the person, she was a tiny cub. I should know that uh, I'm not out there to hurt her or her. She's probably like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gone off on you like that. Distance of heart, Gina and Kevin are now reconciled. But then we never see Gina again, so that's the last we see of her for this. Kevin and Homer are inseparable for this episode. For Kevin, there's never been a hyena quite like Homer. <laughs> you know what you think? He's so cute. <laughs> this four and a half month old hyena is undergoing some dramatic changes. He's super cute for a four and, and a half month old. From that chocolatey, chocolatey dark brown color. He's now getting all these little spots. His new markings are the spotted hyena's trademark. In the wild. A cub's dark coat is perfect Aww. for early life in the There's den, sister. but provides no camouflage on the wheat-colored grasslands. This spotty coat signals a new independence. So that's a huge milestone for our hyena. It's like kind of development from being mollycoddled by mom, and now you're coming out of the den, and uh, now you're going to face reality, and that's the rest of the guy. <laughs> Getting spots is a sure sign of growing up. Yep. Next morning, Kevin receives a phone call from a game park, desperate to find a home for two male hyena cubs. These new cubs will make welcome additions to the Lion Park's clan of hyena ambassadors. Always good news to get uh, two little critters back into the park, yeah. Later that day, 
Kevin's co-worker, Helga, brings the Cubs to the park to start their new lives. These one-month-old brothers... Aww, they're really cute. Their mother tragically died giving birth to them. Oh no, their mother, their mama died. Up until now, they've been hand-raised by the local vet. Well, why did the vet give them up? They're only six weeks old. I think the plans at this stage for these two guys is hand raise them so they need to get to manage. And then at a later stage, we'll see where they actually fit into the equation. Schooling cubs means just one thing. They're hungry. Feeding time. Kevin prepares a formula of egg yolk, cream, and milk designed to replace mom's high fat milk. My units typically in the wild can go without milk for up to periods of even up to a week. Mom's special milk means she can leave her cubs for long periods while she goes in search of a meal. So when they do drink, they drink excessive amounts. And okay, that little that hyena is so cute. Them for a long period of time. Is that good? Raising these demanding babies is going to take both Kevin and I love the narrator's voice. It's so calm and quiet. It's so calming and quiet. They'll need round the clock feeding. The they are so cute for a one for a one month old. The new arrivals need names. They're super cute for one month old babies. You know, I've been thinking of some names, and uh, I don't know what you think of the names. TK and Mongo. That's a nice name. You like? I like. The names stick. Bongo and Tika. Both meaning hyena in two different tribal languages. Right from the word go, Bongo is the dominant cub. It's quite cute to see this here because we're in total control. If it gets a bit serious, I'll pull this guy away. Bongo's aggression towards spotty Tika doesn't let up. When one decides to pick on the other from day one, it can really... They are super cute for six week old I want to hold them so bad. Hey, what you doing? That's horrible. That's the problem with this show, is that we'll need to keep a close eye on the brothers' rivalry over the coming weeks. That's the problem with this show, is that whenever I watch whenever I watch this show, which I now have on DVD, which I now have uh two DVDs of. I don't have the whole show, I just have some of it. But whenever I watch this show, every time they show the baby animal for the first time, like the animal as a baby for the first time, I want to hold it so bad. Today marks an important occasion for five month old Homer. Five months old. Kevin is taking him for his first visit to see the clan. The drive past his Aina family will be the first step in his gradual reintroduction. Wow, we're already halfway through almost. The drive doubles as a good chance for Homer to take a good look at the park's other residents. As usual, he's taking it all in his stride. He's actually sleeping on the window. It's meant to be exhausting, but he's also he's sleeping. sleeping. Homer finds things more interesting once they enter the clan. He's starting to catch wind of the scents of the hyenas, and already the hair in his neck is standing up. He's driving up with a lot of answers. I have to redo that because of a idiot on a motorcycle that just drove by. That just drove by. These are the first hyenas he's seen since he was rescued from his family. There's his sister. Look at your sister, boy. Look at the size difference. It's quite a moment. Homer hasn't seen Marge since they were separated. Eh? Look at that. She too has her spotty coat and is now venturing further from the den. Look at your sister. Look at that. I think you're bigger than her now. Eh? Over the next six months, Homer will be socialized with the clan from the safety of the car. By then, he should be strong enough to hold his own. But there'll always be a risk in returning this little male to the clan, ruled by females. A hyena, when he is too young, obviously can't be reintroduced because he'll be annihilated. And when he's too old, he's too set in his way. Don't worry, my boy. That's enough for you. No, totally terrorizing. Kevin will judge Homer's reintroduction carefully. 
in the nursery. The rivalry between six-week-old Bongo and Tika is worsening. From birth, Bongo has bullied Tika in an effort to establish higher ranking over his brother. Bongo is more of the dominant one. We're giving Tika a little bit more affection than Bongo, and he gets really upset. So that's pure aggression. He wants to give Tika a hiding. For now, Tika needs all the help he can get. <laughs> Tika sounds like it's a, a Arabic While name or something. Try their new teeth out on each other. Mm. Homer is trying his Tika sounds like it's an Indian name or an African name or something. As for Bongo, I have no idea. Homer is starting to shoot some <laughs> That cub was like, let go of me. <laughs> While the brothers try their new teeth out on each other. Homer is trying his out on his <laughs> That cub's like, let go of me. Stop it. That cub's like, stop it. That hurts. Let go of me. Homer is starting <laughs> to show some real attitude. He'll need every ounce of it when he's returned to the clan. I'm not going to give anything away, but that never happens. What do you got? Hey, what are you doing? Are you uh, hurting the cubs again, you naughty thing? I think it's time. I think it's time for you to go and to meet my friend. Eh? It's time for Homer to try his teeth out on the stuff they were designed for. Oh, he's got his baby teeth well, coming in. For their scavenging behavior, hyenas are also skilled hunters. First things first, Homer has to get used to meat. Move, my boy. Look, that's it. That's it. He's like, what is this stuff? Just one enjoy it. Hey, you just away. They usually that's it's usually not an easy task to wean a baby animal. They usually want to stay on the ball. This most basic carnivore behavior isn't coming natural at a young Everyone owner. Everyone is me. Everyone is me. Come on. Come on, me. I think we've got a vegetarian hyena here. I was also late bloomer. I only gave up my bottle at about four. So <laughs> now he's taking off the dance. Today, three-month-old brothers Bongo and Tika have left the security of their nursery. It's their first day in a new outside play area. Are they old enough to leave? Now both posting their spotty coats, it's getting difficult to tell Tika from Bongo. It's actually quite incredible. He's gone from this chocolatey brown color to the speckled spot you cut of the spotted hyena. And when they actually run towards you, you've got to stop and think, well, which one's which? In the wild, How do you know who's who? This age start leaving the den for short periods of exploration. For these two, it's no different. Being hand raised means growing up away from the social life of the clan. You guys get me heavy. Ooh, I'm out of breath. They're going into the lion's den. Socializing with the lion cubs will teach the brothers how to. The cubs are way older. They look at least like they they look at least like Whereas five or six months old. Bongo is about to get a lesson in anger management. With old Bongo is dominating Tika, suddenly now he's not the toughest guy on the block. And uh, these guys here who are slightly bigger and slightly heavier than him. And older. And they possess weapons, big weapons. Life with the lion cubs is all good news for Tika. That's Tika right there. I think that's probably, that's probably, uh, Tika. That was probably Tika right there. ...is a small price to pay for such a successful strategy. And this is pretty cool because these little guys, these are the lion cubs. These little horrible lion cubs, that's what you want. These guys have pretty much toned down Bongo and Tika's behavior. That was, that one's Tika right there. That's gotta be Tika. Where strict hierarchy keeps everyone in their place. 
It's time for six-month-old Homer to understand a critical life skill, competing for food. He's a fast runner for a six-month-old. He's got to see me as something that he's going to fight for. And if he doesn't get that into his head now, he's uh, not going to put it on. Kevin takes a novel approach to encourage Homer's interest in meat. But uh, this is stimulating to the brain. It triggers the instincts. And it's really good fun. With a heart twice the size of a lion's, adult hyenas have incredible stamina. Reaching speeds of up to 35 miles an hour, they have the ability to chase their prey for hours. They get together in packs and they run down their prey, especially when the prey is so tired they actually can't do anything about it. They latch on and grab a part of the prey, grab a part of the prey. Their powerful shoulders, neck, and jaw muscles make them formidable hunters. Feeding time is when clan hierarchy becomes most apparent. What the heck is that, a caucus of? High-ranking females feed first, chasing lower ranks from the carcass. That doesn't even look like a carcass. What is that? Homer's sister Marge is now joining the clan for a small oh, She's a big girl now. Because she's Uno's daughter, she's allowed to eat. Yeah, her. she's the daughter of the leader of the clan. In fact, she'll get cheeky with it. Yeah, yeah, she's only allowed to eat there because she's the daughter of the leader of the clan. Kevin hopes to teach Homer some of that confidence. If he wants his dinner, Kevin's going to make him work for it. It seems Homer's having no trouble picking up on that idea. This is really great because this is the first time on Homer has actually had it taste of a chunk of meat there's a reward in kevin's perseverance finally homer is eating meat each milestone mastered means a step closer to returning homer to his clan i think it's going to be very difficult um the day that eventually does come when we have to put him back with the other guys and maybe take a little bit of a back step and let him uh, fend for himself because he's always been under that dad's protective oh. wing but little does Kevin know that Homer is about to undergo his biggest challenge yet. Which sadly is his last one. The very next morning, Kevin's world turns upside down. In the early hours, staff at the park check on Homer and discover something seriously wrong. I've just received a call from one of my staff members uh, about 10, 20 minutes ago that uh, Homer He's catatonic. He's just lying there. In a, what does catatonic uh, mean? Lump of flesh, and he's not moving. He's unconscious, and the only thing is his eyes are not eating. Barely blinking. So he's rushing to come into the vet, and that's where I'm on my way. Not to eating. Now. He's definitely Kevin, sick. This nightmare is just beginning. Not eating. At the clinic, Homer is about to undergo an exploratory examination. Not eating. That's when you want to so worry. I'm feeling the moment is a little bit apprehensive because of this. Well, as I'm a hyena, this sort of thing doesn't happen. But in the same um, instance, I'm thinking hyenas are tough, so try not to worry because I think he's gonna. Yeah. Well, it's natural to worry it's when something like this happens. Homer is still critically ill. It seems he may have swallowed some sort of poison. He's not looking good, but if you want to come through and see him, what would be the last time? Prepares Kevin for the worst. He went to see him for the last time. Two hours later. And Homer has been put on a drip to hopefully stabilize his condition. All Kevin can do is wait. Little homie, really, he means the world to me. And I just love that little guy. He's every time you know, if you come to work in the morning, you see that little eye, you know, check you out. It's hey, there's no better feeling. He's an amazing little creature. Loving to Kevin desperately needs to find out what Homer may have ingested. He makes a call back to the lion park to see if anything suspicious has been found in his enclosure. Is any blankets or cloths or? But nothing unusual is found by the staff. I mean, somebody poisoned him. Time is running out for Homer. Later that afternoon. Kevin is given the news he's been dreading. Homer, Homer 
has died. The following days are tough as Kevin waits for the autopsy result. He's found by the staff. That means somebody poisoned him. Time is running out for Homer. Later that afternoon, Kevin is given the news he's been dreading. Homer has died. It's a clock door. But nothing unusual is found by the staff. That means somebody poisoned him. Time is running out for Homer. Later Notice he's not on the table. Kevin is given the news he's been dreading. Homer has died. Was he put down or was he, uh, or did he just die? Autopsy, he just died. He wasn't euthanized, he just ended up dying. When the autopsy results finally arrive, they don't shed it. So, autopsy result, he wasn't euthanized, he just ended up dying. To see if anything suspicious has been found in his enclosure. But nothing unusual is found by the staff. Well, nothing unusual was found, that means somebody poisoned him. Time is running out for Homer. Notice Homer's not on the table. Kevin is given the news he's been dreading. Homer has died. Days are tough as Kevin waits for the autopsy. So, results. I mean, autopsy. Autopsy. So, he wasn't euthanized, he just ended up dying while they were treating him. When the autopsy results finally arrive, they don't shed any light on Homer's mystery killer. While the, while the vet team was trying to save his life, while the vet was trying desperately to save his life, autopsy means that Homer wasn't euthanized, he just ended up dying. While the vet was trying, was fighting to save his life. To say, uh, conclusion, systemic poisoning, probably due to a heavy metal. Now that doesn't cut it for me because to this day, it still just doesn't. Results finally arrive. They don't shed any light on Homer's mystery killer. Just said, uh, conclusion, systemic poisoning, probably due to a heavy metal. Heavy metal? No wonder he no, died. Probably tore his stomach up. To this day, it still just doesn't make sense as to why. Didn't make sense when my cat Toby died, or when my puppy Ollie died. It's very sad. Never makes sense when an animal dies. When an animal dies, unless it's old age, it never makes sense. When the autopsy results finally arrive, they don't shed any light on Homer's mystery killer. Just said, uh, conclusion, systemic poisoning, probably due to a heavy metal. Well, no wonder he died. It probably tore his stomach up. Unless an animal dies from old age, it never makes sense why an animal died. It didn't make sense when my puppy Ollie died, when my four-month-old pup Ollie died, or when my two-year-old, uh, when my two-year-old cat Toby got, when my two-year-old cat Toby, who I still really miss, fatally got hit by a car. It's very sad to sit here and think now of all the great things I planned for Homer. I see little Marge and uh, well, she I looks see a lot different uh, now. Homer would sort of look like and but she's also the same age. The realization is that he's never going to be a part of that clan again, and that was. You know what I'd hoped for. There's a sad music playing in the background. Oh, now we get to an emotional flashback. Well, Homer was really like a son to me, I think. He, uh, he was going to be the ambassador of 
all ambassadors for my year. That's pretty dang sad. Six months old. It's always sad when an animal that young dies. I don't think my lifetime. It's always heartbreaking when a baby animal that young dies. It's gonna be the ambassador of all it look like that. Obviously the realization is that he's never gonna be a part of that clan again, and that was you know what I'd hoped for. Oh no, we get to an emotional flashback now. Sometimes sometimes this show can be a little bit emotional, but it's still a cool a pretty cool show. This is pretty dang sad. Six months old. It's always heartbreaking when an animal that young dies. I don't think my lifetime I'm gonna Even when an animal di life. dies as a 10-month-old, any baby animal that dies as a baby Just is heartbreaking. The weeks ahead will be difficult. Whenever a baby animal dies as a baby or as a young animal, right before they reach their first birthday, it's heartbreaking. Just to life without hope. Or even when they die at the age my like say at the age my cat died too. That's heartbreaking because of how young they were. That's where he's at now. That's where Homer's at now. Since Homer died, brothers Bongo and Tika have been cared for by Helga. Wow, they I can't even tell who's who. Kevin is struggling to move on. I think I have back in the raising of Bongo and Tika, not in commitment, but in the raising of them. Always in the back of my mind is what happened to Homer, and I don't want it to happen to Bongo and Tika. His reluctance to get too close to these cubs means they're missing out on some much needed discipline. A few weeks ago, the lion cubs were the bosses of this playground, but not any longer. Now the brothers have started ganging up on the older and bigger lion cubs. Kevin senses a change in the intensity of their play. Oh, yep. Now that now they're, now they're not playing. Gets out of control. Now they're not playing. Now they're in a fight. Any longer. Now the brothers have started ganging up on the older and bigger lion cubs. Oh, dramatic music playing. Yep, now they're now they're not playing. Now they're now they're fighting. Yeah, now they're fighting. Then something magical happens. Despite his intentions, Kevin just can't resist these naughty hyena cubs. They've got incredibly cute characters, and uh, although I've tried to distance myself from them, uh, it's kind of hard not to get involved. After all that's happened, Bongo and Tika finally have Kevin back. Now too rough for the Lion Cubs, there are some big changes ahead for the brothers. How old are they now? They desperately need a family, one that can handle their rowdy ways. Kevin has some likely candidates in mind. Why not put him with the other hyena clan? In an enclosure separated from the main clan. Why not put him with the main clan? Known affectionately as the misfits, they bear the scars of being the lowest ranking males in the female dominated clan. Why can't you put him in a, a main clan? I'm sure they'd fit right in. Trini, Ajif, and Henry of the three misfits of the hyena clan and what actually happened was the clan continually harassed the three of them until eventually we had to take them out and, and separate them into a new enclosure for me the most logic solution to Tika and Bongo's dilemma is with uh, those three hyenas because eventually we can actually put some females with them and form a new clan 
Over the next few months, the Cubs will get to know the misfits through the safety of the fence. If the misfits sense no threat, Bongo and Tico will join them in forming a new clan. Why can't they join the main clan? typically a low posture, tear in the neck up, and uh, aggressive tail, which is right the way up. And obviously a lot of vocalizing. But membership is not automatic. It has to be earned. Since birth, Bongo's been the dominant cub, and he's not about to give it up. His frenzied whooping and tail raising are signs of misplaced bravado and could lead to trouble. There's two minutes left in this. Unbelievable. These guys are actually thinking, gee, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Yo, he's got a lot of heart. For now, the adults are powerless to put Bongo in his place. So long as he's on this side of the fence, he's safe. We've really got to, you know, make a bold decision as to when and how we actually put these little guys in place with the bigger guys. I really just don't want to be responsible for the little hyena getting his ear ripped off or his back bitten so severely that I've got to take him to the vet. After today's feisty display, Kevin decides he'll delay the next meeting until the cubs are a little more mature. Okay, let's go. Six weeks later, and Kevin is feeling nervous about today's through the fence meeting. I think, again, we're gonna have a bit of aggression from Bongo, a little bit more uh, cocksure, a little bit older, and how it's gonna go, I really don't know. Another dominant display from Bongo could shatter Kevin's dream of giving the Cubs the family they so badly need. Yeah, cause then. Our own bossy little bongo. Yeah, cause then what are you gonna do if he displays aggression he again? Approaches the misfits with none of the aggression of last time. So he's calmed down a lot since he's like what seven months now. Our own bossy little bongo. But he approaches the misfits with none of the aggression of last time. His low tail position signals he's no threat. He's some missing. He's a lot more relaxed. Yeah, he's um, doing. Kind of he's submissive now. He's the submitting to them. No noise. A little bit of talking every now and again. Everyone seems to be relaxed. These are good signs. In two months' time, the Cubs will go through their ultimate test when they enter the Misfits' territory. From past experience, Kevin knows only too well. The risk involved. One yeah, there's always risk involved. And the next one, we've got hyenas being bitten severely on the back. So you just never know how these things are going to go. Yeah, that, it, all, it always can go. Eight month old Bongo and Tika have grown into strong, confident young hyenas. Yeah, it can always go wrong. Day, you never know how it can go. You never know how it can go. Never again do the same for the brothers or for Kevin. Exciting time, also a bit of a bittersweet moment because uh, it's kind of the last I'm going to have of Bongo and Tika together to myself. That's okay. Soon Kevin must stand back and watch as his babies make their way in the unpredictable world of hyenas. That's okay. You'll find some more cubs to raise. Over at the Misfits enclosure, there's. That's okay. You'll either. Uh, Either more cubs will be brought in, or somebody will have, or one of the hyenas will have one or more cubs. Which will, uh, which he'll be able to raise. It's of the occasion. Everyone is alert and on edge. So this isn't the last of hyenas that you'll get to, this isn't the last time he gets, he'll have to, he gets to be around hyenas because he knows that there will either be cubs brought in, or there'll be cubs brought in or born left and right. So. Feeling a little bit nervous and apprehensive about the whole thing. However, I know 
Look how big they are now. They're eight months old. They're big. They're they're big boys now. Yeah. The plan is to first let the Cubs into a satellite cage beside the Misfits. Once Kevin is confident that all hyenas are relaxed, he will let Bongo and Tika join the Misfits. The calm atmosphere is encouraging. Now, Kevin must make the critical decision. Oh, they're sniffing each other. You have to, though. That's the tough part about being a parent, letting your kid go. It's now or never. I really don't know where Bongo and Tico fit into this little hierarchy. I wouldn't mind them fitting in anywhere, as long as they fit in. The moment of truth has arrived. Right from the word go, Bongo is the center of attention. Kevin can no longer protect him. The much bigger misfit seems keen to put the little hyena firmly in his place. <laughs> They're just chasing each other. But Bongo's confident reaction is a sign that one day he'll be at the top of this hierarchy. Bongo actually just exudes uh, an air about him that says, I'm confident and I know my status. Instead, attention turns on Tika. When a hyena sniffs him or grabs him, he acts in a way uh, that would say, I'm a little bit intimidated. And that's, that's what that drive on. Kevin can only watch helplessly as Tika goes through this harsh initiation. He can fight back though, he's old enough now. It's an extremely difficult situation for me at the moment because every time one of them bites my baby's on the neck, I'm gonna come in here and blitz on him and show who, who's the dominant male in this clan. But this battle for dominance is strictly hyena business. Today has been tough for the Cubs, but they've survived their first step into clan life. You know these days are, are coming when you've got to actually give your children back or, or let them go on their own. Yeah. So with that, that said, I'm, I'm really happy. By the end of the week, the new clan looks like it's been together forever. There's no doubt Bongo and Tika have finally found their place amongst their own kind. I think my relationship with Bongo and Tika is not going to be as intimate as it was uh, when they were on the own. However, they do form part of a, a clan of six. And I say six because I see myself as a member. Um, we've got a, a clan situation where we all know each other, we're all great friends, and we're going to continue the good name of hyenas out there. Thanks to Kevin's dedication, spotted hyenas are discarding their lowly image as the world begins to see them as intelligent, fearless predators who've earned their place on the African plains.